obviously you are a huge fan of fantasy and dragons and so what what is like your most favorite thing about writing fantasy? You know, um, that's, a, that's, that's a good question. I think my most favorite thing is uh, showing characters in these really challenging, difficult situations and showing them rise up and be, you know, who they really are and, you know, make the hard choices. You know, I think good writing is about characters who make choices, who are strong and who decide Sometimes you've got to do something that you don't want to do, but you have to do it, you know. So I, I don't write a lot of um, sort of anti-hero fantasy, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's more of the, the heroic type of, of character who wants to do the right thing. Of course, in the, in the novels, there are characters that are not doing the right thing, and they make bad choices, and it's fun to explore their bad choices, too. But uh, overall, I like I like to show characters, you know, doing the right thing and um, going after that unattainable goal that seems like it's almost suicidal, but they have to do it anyway. Um, so that I think that's yeah, that's what I'm into. Yeah, that that kind of reminds me back when you said um, Tolkien, because he also has a lot of those themes, like you know, good conquering evil, and you know, even just like the smallest people can. Be, biggest difference and I think that's really great that you include that into your writing as well. Oh thanks yeah I think um, to, you know epic fantasy has a certain feel to it and Golden Cord and Thorncloth Forest uh, has that that feel where is it epic fantasy you're like hmm is this is this really epic fantasy and I try to disguise book one a little bit so you're not sure if it's epic fantasy it's it feels like maybe something a little different and then toward the end of the book, and then as the series gets going, it's like, yes, this is epic fantasy. They are trying to save the world. You know, not many people know that the world is in peril, uh, but they know. And that might be the, the irony of the, of the whole series, is that, um, we'll call it the main storyline. They may accomplish their goal. Who knows, right? <laughs> they might. Um, but then nobody will even know that they saved the world. And I think that's the that's the cool part about it for me. There's another storyline in the book where the, the female main character, yeah, she's saving the world, and you're going to see that, and everybody will know. But these other this other group that kind of started it off, you won't know for sure. So anyway, wow, that sounds really really interesting the way that you're putting it. I think. You know, in so many fantasy stories, it's pretty like clear cut. Like, okay, we have to go, you know, on this huge epic thing, you know, that everybody knows about. Like, you know, it's um, a lot of fantasies tend to kind of follow that. So I think it's really great that you kind of deviate from that just a bit. That they still have yeah. to save the world, but they they are acting on their own will instead of having the pressure of like millions on them, like visibly, I guess. Right, and, and the, the people who are who they're trying to help aren't really that supportive, which is sort of funny. You know, they're like, man, it's just kind of crazy how they're they're doing something, and yet they don't have the support of some of their own people. Um, but I don't know. It's you know, you, you you try to spin epic fantasy in your own way, and I had to find my unique way to do it because it's been done so many times. But I still I wanted to tell the story. So I had to, you know, create this really dangerous world where, you know, if you go outside and you don't have cover, you might get, you know, killed by, you know, these flying griffins or wyverns or potentially a dragon or whatever. And it's just this super dangerous world where uh, the people live on these big plateaus and they look off the edge and they, they look down and they see clouds below. They just see the tops of these white clouds and nobody knows what's below the clouds because it's just so far down. And they, they know that, you know, demons and griffins and all these other creatures fly up out of the, the void, they call it, the mist, this abyss. And they, they're always in danger. So I, I wanted to explore this dangerous world where you, you take your life into your own hands when you leave the cover of trees and, or caves or wherever it is that they live. So I, I just, uh, I wanted to, to not have the, the Tolkien Shire so beautiful, you know, home is wonderful. No, home is dangerous. You know, and the main character comes from this village, which is explored in the, in the story of the Thorncloth Forest, where they're living in this bad, difficult place. And they, they had to make a choice to live there for a, 
for a tough reason. You know, they don't really want to live there, but they have to. So that's that's explored, and you know who you are as a person in that village is defined by you know what you can do and how tough you are, and you know so the main character comes from kind of a tough environment, and I wanted to explore that. So anyway, <laughs> it's awesome. So um, like we as readers, we usually like imagine our authors as these like stoic, you know, writers who hide away and in closets and write their books, and so. Mm -hmm. Do you have any like strange writing habits or any quirking, quirky writing habits? You know, um, I think that I've I've changed as a writer over the years. I used to just sit down and write like you know twenty or thirty pages in a night, and it was just crazy. Um, and I thought you just wrote point A to point B, and then to C and D. And I found out later, and you all, if you're watching this and you're writers, don't write point C if it's boring. Skip it go to the next thing, skip past it, make the reader catch up, figure out what's going on. Um, so the, the quirky habits that I have now would be that I'm just really precise and slow about how I put chapters together. And lately I'm getting into like these apps on my phone where I listen to, you know, thunder and wind and rain. And, you know, I play like this brainwave thing that like supposed to get your brain excited and I'll just put the headphones on and I'll just go and, and try to block out all all distractions. So I'm I'm more distractible now uh, in in my life, and I so my quirky habit would be that I have to like block out the world to really get into it now. Um, and I also I like to have art when I'm writing. I like to have some image or piece or something to look at to kind of ground me. If I'm writing a chapter from a certain character's point of view or about a monster or something, so like the illustrator for my Iron Dragon series, I'll put up one of her pictures. You know, I love artists. I'm a huge, huge fan. Um, so I'll put up a picture and I'll just kind of look at that and that'll inspire me. So those are just a few little quirky things, I guess. Mm -hmm.